what we'll do is um uh, for those that are just coming through the door um it is lunchtime please feel free to um have your lunch uh have a drink and everything um it's lovely to, if you can have your cameras on so we can just see each other um it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a small friendly group here um but if, if you feel uncomfortable it's not suitable appreciate that that etc we know sometimes if, if if Amazon ring the doorbell or, or, or delivery, feel free to go to um um feel free to um you know you you go go and go and answer the door as they say. Okay, so um a huge welcome to everyone and thank you for being highly. This is a really important role you've got. Um, no pressure. It's an important role though. Um, values trailblazer judging panelists. Um, and today is a briefing session. Uh, all of you will be new to this, and so you're all in the same boat, and we'll explain to you what it means. Trailblazers are more than an award, and we'll explain more um, in the session um, and how key a role you all play. Um, as I said, it is lunchtime, so chat away, um, so uh, drink and relax. Um, I'm next, uh, next slide, please. I'm Javid Thomas, co founder of uh, Race Quality Matters, along with Raj Tulsiani, who is also the CEO of Green Park. We are joined today by Anna Irving, project manager uh, for Trailblazers and REM Solutions, who will be a main point of contact for Trailblazers. You should have already heard from um, her. And in the background, um, we've got Svetlana Chigozi um, on Yesanya, who's actually um, making this go as smoothly um, when every time I mess it up. So thank you, Svetlana. Next slide, please. Uh, just a bit of housekeeping. Um, um, we acknowledge um, and we're looking to make our events as accessible as possible. So closed captioning has been enabled. Um, the event is being recorded and will be available for you to access later along with the slides if helpful, um, because there's quite a bit of information we're sharing with you, but um, it, it might feel complicated at times, but it won't be at the end, okay? Um, to minimize disturbance, your sound is auto disabled, so please share any ideas or check questions in the chat and we'll do our best to respond. But um, there will be a couple of sessions where we have Q&A, so we'll go through part and then we'll give you an opportunity for, for, for a Q&A. Uh, Please be aware that Zoom text chat can be sometimes quite busy. So if you have a notification setting on, you may wish to disable it. Um, next slide, please. Um, it's important to share that Race Quality Matters would not be possible without support of our funding partners. Uh, you see, um, who along with co-founder Green Park, um, um, fund and enable us to do all this work. Um, and a big thank you to Lloyd, our news key partner. Next slide, please. Uh, also, big thanks to you to co-founder the Collaboratory, um, where I'm from, and also Lifetime Visual Partner, BT, Autotrader, HS2, Edelman, and Network Rail. Um, it's important that we acknowledge their support, as it means race quality matters, solutions, and resources are free to access to the community. Uh, and I'm sure uh, many of you may have um, accessed it. If you think your organization may be interested to support us, um, um, please do get in touch. And there's marketing um, or, or donation opportunities. We'd love to speak to you. Um, next slide. Today's session is all about helping you, helping you as judges to successfully determine which organizations are doing good, which ones have created enough impact to achieve sta Trailblazer status. We'll explain why Trailblazer was created by the community and its importance. We'll go through the process. You'll hear from two previous judging panelists on what they were looking for in applications. We will then go, there'll be a chance for a Q&A. And then we'll go through the application form and how to submit your responses, which Anna will take you through. Uh, and also we'll hear from a successful trailblazer about the impact it's had on their organization. And as I said, there'll be two opportunities for Q and A's. Next slide, please. Um, on the off chance you're new to Race Quality Matters, a big welcome. Um, we are a not-for-profit and a catalyst to move organizations and individuals from just talking about race to meaningful action and an impact. So it's not talk, it's action. This is one of the reasons why Trailblazers was created and why it is more than an award. We co-create concepts and solutions in collaborations with those with lived experience of racial inequality. The key is to help organizations make the impact we all want to see and indeed feel. Um, some of the solutions you can see here, Race Quality Week, uh, the first Monday um, of every um, February. Uh, the Big Promise, Safe Space Plus, Tea Break, My Name Is, which had 1.7 billion hits. Um, during race equality um, week. Next slide, please. We've recently created a five-day challenge, which is five challenges that take five minutes over uh, five days. So no excuse for organization colleagues not to take part. This was launched in race equality week with over a thousand organizations engaged. And we've got version two coming up for race equality week 2024. Next slide. We also have a race equality matters jobs board, again, to help organizations get to a more um, uh, diverse talent pool. 
And finally, we have trailblazers, the reason we are all here today. Next slide, please. Trailblazers, what are they and what is it? Firstly, it is more than an award. For far too long, progress in tackling race inequality across the UK and an organisation has been too, too slow, if non-existent in many. Next slide. During Race Equality Week, we found out that 48% of respondents said their organisations talked but took little action in tackling race inequality. And a further attempt that said it was just talk. So the majority is not making any real impact. The evidence from those with lived experience is clear. And we appreciate you may have experienced it yourselves in that there's been a lot of talk, but limited action in your organizations. The result being there's very little meaningful impact being made and progress does not move. Trailblazer is designed to hear what is making a difference, what's working. And we want to recognize organizations that are driving change that is having a meaningful impact. It also will help us highlight and recognize what works. And you'll see organizations that are doing good stuff. Next slide, please. Trailblazer has been developed in response to requests by the Race Quality Matters uh, we, we regularly receive from people who want to know which organizations are doing good and what are they doing. Next slide, please. One of our trailblazers from Wave 3, Rethink Mental Illness, had this to share about when why they felt trailblazers were important when they received it. Becoming a trailblazer is important to be able to showcase the actions organizations are taking in order to eliminate racial injustice. Next slide. It challenges organizations to exhibit how they are tackling race inequality issues and what impact this has had. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. It is a holistic benchmark which takes into consideration all parts of the business. So you can clearly see where improvements need to be made, where you're excelling and where considerations can be evaluated so that you're they and their race network were inspired it made such a difference to their organization and we hear from another successful trailblazer soon next slide please as a number of the co-creators of trailblazer said it is setting a high bar that will accelerate progress it's a standard setter it's an education tool it's also a marketing tool but fundamentally it's a way of recognizing what actually has a meaningful impact on the drive for race equality so more organizations can look to follow in the footsteps of successful trailblazers. Next slide, please. If an organization succeeded in becoming a trailblazer, the status can act as evidence for their employees and future employees. It will access a wider talent pool, its customers and clients, shareholders and investors, and also the community and other stakeholders. It shows an organ that an organization is serious, proactive and committed when it comes to tackling race inequality and that you judges play a key role in this. Those, um, those are just a few of the benefits of becoming a trailblazer. Next slide. There are two types of trailblazer status. The first is for organizations that have successfully implemented a race equality matters solution. They can apply to be a solution trailblazer for each of the solutions they've run, e.g. Safe Space Plus, okay. Tea Break, My Name is, etc. By achieving this, this is a lifelong recognition. It's theirs forever because they have run it and shown it's made a difference. Next slide. The second type of trailblazer status covers both race equality matter solutions or something else an organization may have done to tackle race inequality. Because we know as well as our solutions, we recognize there may be other solutions or initiatives out there that work. So we want to acknowledge those that do and shine a light on these so that other people are aware of these initiatives and we can all learn from them. Next slide, please. Organizations initially apply to, um, to achieve bronze status. So you don't go randomly anyway, you apply for bronze status. And then over time, you progress to silver, gold, and platinum. Um, and as a result, delivering a greater impact at each stage. These Trailblazer Awards are time limited. So this is to ensure that organizations keep the momentum going and don't live off an award they achieved a long time ago with very little progress. We don't want an organization to say, we've got trailblazers in 18, 8, 1888, <laughs> aren't we inclusive? It's a story we hear too often, people living off long time ago awards. So bronze status is valid for 18 months maximum and organizations can then apply for silver status. And then you have silver states for a while and then you go up. So this is to keep the momentum going. Next slide, please. 
Trailblazers provide an opportunity for the community to see what good looks like and to inspire more organisations to up their game when it comes to tackling race inequality. And what good looks like is actually decided by yourselves, um, not any of our team in Race Equality Matters. Next slide, please. So as a panellist and a judge, your, you are, your role is at the heart of this process. Your perspective is crucial to help identify what is working and what is good. You'll also be able to determine what you think is not making a difference. Next slide, please. Your role allows you to become part of a movement that we and our community believe will accelerate change. Previous panellists have shared that they gave the opportunity to gain insight, be an advocate for change, make a difference, drive tackling race inequality, etc. Next slide, please. What we just like to do is share um, an, a, a quick um, soundbite from a couple of our judges to hear um, or why they thought Trailblazers is important and what they looked for in an application. So here's two previous judges, Natalie and Joanne. Thank you. Why do you think trailblazers are important? Um, I think it's a great opportunity for organisations to focus on what they're trying to achieve and then communicate that both internally and externally. It allows them to shout about the great things that they're doing. And it also, just me partaking in this, I've realised when I'm searching for a job, I'm only ever going to apply for somebody who's got a trailblazer status. Um, yeah, agree. I think it's hugely important um, and it enables organisations to be demonstrative of what they're doing, like both internally and externally. Um, it also encourages those, um, you know, to do others to do better. And if they perhaps didn't have the evidence to actually carry on their journey and, and, um, and do better. And I think just having that trailblazer award just keeps that momentum that energy in this space you know and and it's for things for people to seek to achieve and, and strive towards so i think it's hugely important thank you we'll now briefly share an overview on how an organization becomes um a race equality matters trailblazer in a nutshell the process is as follows and we will share the visuals with you afterwards and we'll keep um we'll we'll keep communicating through with you without the process throughout the process. We've highlighted in green um, the stages that we completed so far. The rest in amber shows what next steps are and the bit you can see um, with a couple of arrows in black bold is where, where, where you come. So um, next slide, please. So, so far, um, we're in the process of carrying out light reviews for those, um, actually go back one, sorry. Um, apologize, yeah. Um, for those um, who submitted the application by the 11th of September. So it's a light review that we go back to them to give them some tips of, of how they can make it more impactful for you uh, for when you read it. Secondly, then submissions are open to the 23rd of October. So applications are still open to the 23rd of October and we're getting them in. Thirdly, once received, we will then anonymize um, all the applications and then we'll group the applications to ensure, ensure they're suitable to be judged. As applications are suitable to coming in, we've managed two sets of um, judging. Um, one group of panellists will be judging the early applications and the second will be getting those that come in late um, in late in October. Uh, the first group of panellists will receive their applications on the 2nd of October, so in a couple of weeks time. Um, and the second group, um, you'll get yours um, uh, early November. Applications will be sent to you in batches of between five and eight, depending how um, uh, detailed they are because we've estimated that reviewing them should take around two hours. So you, you get five or eight, but it'll take um, around two hours in total. But once you receive them, you actually have two weeks to go through them uh, and assess the criteria um, as, as you see fit. Um, what we find some people, some people do it in one go into us, some do one a day, some do it on weekends. It's totally up to you in, in your own time and space. Um, the first group will complete their first round of judging by the 16th of October. So I said, yeah, yeah, from the 2nd to the 16th of October, you'll be judging. Um, all respective reviews will be put through an algorithm that we do our end to determine whether the application has been successful, borderline, or on this occasion, has not met the criteria. Successful applications will be announced during Race Equality Week. So the batch you're working on or you'll be working on will be announced during Race Equality Week. Next slide, please. 
as I said, some um, um, slides, so some some applications um, are found to be borderline after the first round of assessment. <clears throat> and I'll go over how it works. It's a bit detail-y, but we provide clear instructions more near a time. And you don't have to worry about borderline yet, but we just thought we'd share the process with you. Basically, borderline is where we, you know, between the judges, don't think they're quite um, ready or, um, or some of you score them quite highly and some lowly. So it's quite, quite mixed reviews. Each borderline entry will then receive feedback from us um, to respond to in 14 days to see if they can address some of the judges' questions or potential concerns, you know, which is why they're borderline. And everything they get back is also anonymous. After each group has, has, has been assessed, those borderlines from the first group will then resubmit their applications in November, uh, and the second group will resubmit theirs in, in December. The revised submissions of the first group will be sent to the panelists in November, and the second group will, so um, panelists will get on 11th of December. If you look at board lines, you may have been in the first round wave of judges, but also you might be new to a board line application. So it'll be quite mixed groups. Uh, and, and you'll only get one or two. So we're giving you seven days to review the board line applications. I said, don't worry about the detail here. You'll all receive clear instructions on this and the timer. So you'll get an email saying, here's the board lines. This is what you need to do. And as part of the successful trailblazers, the board lines, once you've determined whether they're successful or not, they will be announced in Race Quality Week 2024. Just to let you know, anyone that's not successful is not publicly um, announced. And we don't have a list of who's applied, et cetera. So only successful ones get it. Um, on average, we find about 63, 64% of applications are successful. So judges are typically quite a robust, um, you know, so it's like 36% don't make it. Next slide, please. After successful trailblazers have um, um, been announced during Race Quality Week, all applications, both successful and those that did not reach the criteria, will get a feedback report to facilitate their progress and any further applications. All reports will include the strong areas of the application, which you would, you would have advised, and suggestions of areas they may have to focus on, um, as well as visuals from the scoring process, and we'll show you an example later on. Many of organisations have told us that the report helps shape their EDI objectives and plans for the coming year. Next slide, please. So what's next, and, and how does judging work? All the judging panels selected, which includes you all, and there's some others that couldn't make today, have diverse experience and backgrounds from different sectors, but all of you identify as ethnically diverse. That's crucial, okay? Each application is reviewed and scored by you individually, independently. So this removes any potential bias and influence that is common in typical group discussions. As I said earlier, you'll be sent a collection of five to eight applications. You'll have two weeks to score each application and we will be going through the scoring in a sec. Um, and we've estimated roughly 15 minutes per application, as I said, roughly taking two hours in total. Next slide, please. To remove the risk of the bias in the applications, I said you will receive the applications and they'll be an anonymized as much as possible. So it might say this is a transport company or this is a financial services company. I said you will score them independently and they're scored between 0 to 5. Next slide, please. So not means there was no evidence to the question. You know, they said they said so, but there's no evidence or, or, or belief in it. One, actually, they provided some evidence, but it's minimal. Two, they provide evidence, but you don't think it's quite enough evidence. Three is what we call fair evidence. Yet yeah, they've answered that question pretty well. Four is good evidence. And then five is clear and substantial evidence. And you'll see from applications, the scoring's all over the um, place. What we do find between the judges, um, most of you score within one. So, you, you know, for, for one question, you might, many of you will end up scoring it two and a three. So it's usually pretty close um, like that. So, you know, it, your independent decision or thinking is absolutely right. Um, if you believe a response is, say, between fair and good, you score it fair. It has to achieve good to get good. So even if it's close to good, you'd, we don't give it a good score. We give it a fair score, okay? Next slide, please. I said the scores are then amalgamated and put through an algorithm to give us three outcomes. Currently does not make, make, meet the criteria. It's borderline or it receives trailblazer status. Next slide, please. We thought we'd share some, um, um, some insights from a successful trailblazer. So this video includes James Jackson, People EDI and Wellbeing Program Manager. 
and Isabel Weir, People, EDI and Wellbeing Project Manager from Weir, NHS South, uh, Central and West Commissioning Support Unit. One of our successful travellers just from the last round. So if we could have the video, that'd be great. Thank you. Why was it important for your organisation to apply to become a trailblazer? It's important for our organisation to apply. Um, as part of the wider NHS, there is a lot of um, there's a lot of narrative in terms of you know how inclusive the organisation is as a whole. Um, the more it can do for for BME inclusion. So within our organisation, as part of the NHS, it's important uh, to apply for this award to see where we are and see how we benchmark um, against those that are doing it well, and to then showcase the fact that we are making progress in, in this space. Um, but it's I think it's for for those looking onwards and and outwards so those within the organization looking those looking looking into our organization to see that this is an inclusive organization it is committed to racial uh, parity it is committed to bme inclusion i think for those reasons alone and help generate a psychologically safe space in terms of where you can work and where you feel like you belong that's why it's important for our organization to apply what impact did achieving your trailblazer award have on your organization it continues to evidence the momentum um, that we uh, and the traction that we've gained um, since implementing our journey towards building a culture of belonging um, and this external award and trailblazer uh, accreditation if you will evidences that greatly um, but notably for uh, you know, members of our organization from within the BME community the other element is it actually shines a light on how far we have progressed so to have uh, an organization like uh, race qualities matters with a culturally ethnic diverse panel assess us independently and grade us at this level show shows that we've come on a, on a way where we're part way on our journey and we're making positive progress towards bme inclusion and representation within the organization why would you recommend organizations apply to become a trailblazer it, it was a really uh, good experience applying for it. That there's a number of reasons I'd recommend it. One of them being that just doing the application um, between you know our team in the EDI and Wellbeing and the BME network, we had a lot of time to reflect on the progress that has been made, um, which is a really positive experience in itself. But then you know actually getting the award was kind of that validation of those things we'd put forward, um, particularly for for the network and and seeing that kind of come to life through that application and then through that award but we've you know we've used the um the the trailblazer status already in in our recruitment and it's it's i think it's gaining a lot of energy for people within the organization you know it's not just what we've done and celebrating that but what more can we do so it's it's kind of um generated some some positivity and some energy around around race equality and and got people talking about what what more we can do why do you think trailblazers are important I think they're important. So I, we we were kind of aware of the Trailblazers program um, a while ago, and and we've joined you know race quality matters events in the past as well. Um, and one of the things that we always get out of them is is you know what other people are doing, hearing about you know people that are um, doing some really innovative things in this space, um, and learning from that. And I think um, it's it's really amazing to be part of that to feel like we are adding to that as well. Um, I think the Trailblazers set a really good standard in terms of the innovation that that people can come up with you know the, the progress that can be made um and it's it's that accountability as well of you know we're not just going to say we're going to do it we're going to do it great thank you so and that's very common um the impact it's having on these organizations um so um in in, in a few minutes anna's going to start going through the questions and 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 uh, the responses and what 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 um you know how, how how you as judges would answer it what we thought and we've shared a lot of information with you uh, um already we're going to allow a, a bit of a q a um here so about five minutes so if you've got any um questions um can you um what what i suggest can you just put it in the chat and then what i'll do is i'll, I'll read it out um there is another q a later on as well so we've got two chances so, so don't worry about it and again anna and i will be around you know be, beyond today's event for further questions so um, and i appreciate at the moment it might be a bit um, still is a bit sketchy, but if you want to put some any questions in the chat, um, we, we, we'll, we'll allow for that. And 
and whilst people do that, and we know quite a few people have just joined um, uh, once we started. Um, it is lunchtime, so feel free to eat and um, have your lunch uh, and relax. But then also um, feel um, free to um, have your camera on. It's lovely to see, on or off. It's lovely to see your faces, so you can see some friendly um, faces there. Uh, but if you're not comfortable or not suitable environment, yeah, have your camera off, sort of thing. So I'm just going to say at the moment, um, again, conscious time, um, there's no questions in the chat and that's fine. So um, I'll assume um, I've either confused you completely or it's got it perfect. Um, <laughs> I will ask for a vote on that. Um, but as I said, we'll go through the rest of it and then there's plenty of time at the end to ask more more, more, more questions. Okay. Um, oh, so there's a question that comes through from um, Audrey. Thank you. Um, can an organization apply for the next status before the existing state has expired? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 so the idea. So, there are some organisations that applied for bronze, and they really got, you know, they they nailed it. So, actually, we thought they were quite close to silver. So, within six months, that that they, they they will apply. Um, so, I think of the first round. Maybe let's say let's say there's about fifteen bronzes. I think three or four were sort of close to silver. But from the feedback, they built on the feedback and then went from it. But that that's the idea. But we we're, we're saying, you know, we're giving people eighteen months time. To, to get it going but that gets the momentum going but a really good question um because we know some organizations are quite mature in what they're doing um is there an appeal process for those applicants who challenge the outcome of their <laughs> application uh, we've, we've not had that yet i think they'll get the feedback and the feedbacks are you know you know collected from yourselves um, and and they, they can get it and i guess you know it's they just have to accept it like that um we had no complaint we've actually had people that found it really helpful and they thought you know we we thought we were doing well but actually, hearing what they're just saying, we kn we know we need to up our game, um, etc. Et, 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 et like that. So that so that that's um, there there is um, I, I guess the board line is the closest. So we're saying you're not quite there. Um, ha have have a look at this. I I guess we'll speak to an organisation and, and we'll go through the application with them if there, if there's a concern. But um, there hasn't been a problem yet. Um, a breakdown for the past trailblazers rounds would be really useful. It might be uh. If that might be available, you mentioned about two to three success rate. Yes. How many of these are first time? Uh, how many is the first time and how many board line I get through at review? Also, do you have commonly encountered issues? I I, I think that the success rate was. Um, so I think initially when people apply, it's about 51 percent are successful. And then um, there's a, a percentage that are board line. So maybe let's say another 20, 25 percent of board line. And then of them, it, it becomes sort of sixty-three percent. So that that that's typically what 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 happens. Um, most um, are for first time applicants. Um, there are some that actually they they didn't make it the first time, and then they've applied within six months on the feedback, and then they've got it. It's quite nice to know, um, you know, wow, they 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 must have taken something on it. You know, judge judge judges seen that. So that that that's where it comes through. So thank you for that question. I uh, got Rav Shaw. Um, if their status expires, do they need to reply before they considered for a higher level? I bronze expired, but they want to be considered for Silvernet. Yeah. So what we do is um, what we've now done is we, we're putting um, uh, dates on the, the the Trailblazer badge, so it's it's on there. So if you see someone with a bronze status in eighteen eighty three, you know they yeah, they're living off something in the past. Um, so so they've got that that it, it's on there. I think once they've got that date, and this will be built by the community, it'll put them under pressure. And we'll write to them. You know, you're six months away from expiring. What are you planning to do? Uh, we will allow people to apply for bronze again uh, because it's on that side. Um, uh, because we want to keep the momentum going and what we believe if an organization has got it it'll encourage others to, to get on there because once you see your competitors on there you know it, it'll, it'll drag us up but i think most people are quite competitive they want to go from bronze to silver on that side we haven't got to that stage yet so it's a really good question and, and i can give a better answer then angela is there a list of good solution examples of how organization can become more inclusive so they can try out those solutions out what we suggest what we do we we, we um we um, write case studies on all successful trailblazers. So if you go to our website, um, so, so some did Safe Space Plus or Tea Break, read it. That's how, and it explains how they did it. And it's slightly different, but some may have done something completely different and, and, and go on there. So actually, you can go and nosy in these and you think actually that's really useful for our organization. There may be some organization sectors very similar to yours, so you can see what do they do. So that's the reason we do it. Also at our events, we do invite trailblazers, depending on what the subject matter is, at our future events to come and talk as well. So they explain how they've gone about the process, et cetera. Um, just to let you know, more important than not, what makes a difference in trailblazer status or not is the voice of ethnic diverse colleagues in the application. 
and evidence of it. So without that, it, you know, it, it, they will never get through through on it. And, and as you as judges can clearly see wh whether it's coming through. Um, so hopefully we cover that. So th thanks for some good questions. So we, we'll have another chance in a sec. What we'll do before I um, introduce you to Anna, um, I just wanted to share another quick word from a previous judge, Nav Ahmed. Thank you. As a judging panellist, what were you looking for to determine whether an organisation should become a trailblazer? Yeah, for, for me, the best ones, I think, were the ones where you could really clearly see the impact. So uh, they were backed up with statistics, sort of really showing what impact had been made. Uh, but for me, it was a range of initiatives that I'd seen, so really good, interesting, innovative initiatives that were taking place, which I think really showed that people care about making a difference so it wasn't just you know they're doing something for the sake of it or for a limited period it was really sustained and i think i would say really honest as well in terms of knowing this is where we are now but we haven't cracked everything you know we know what we need to do in the future and, and where we want to be uh, so for me i think that was really refreshing to be able to see that people are genuinely committed and it was a pleasure to read some of those applications so yeah it's, it's been a really good opportunity Thank you, over to Anna. Hi all, uh, so it's great to see you. Um, many of you I have spoken to already, um, but we will now go through the process. So um, Svetlana, next slide. Okay, so initially you will receive an email with a link to a pack of five to eight applications. You can see the example on the screen. You will primarily, primarily receive uh, bronze applications, but you may receive one or two solution applications and a silver application. Next slide. You will then receive a unique link to your feedback and scoring document, which is separate. You can see here, this is a bronze feedback form. This is how the, firstly, this is how the bronze application will look. Next slide. So this is the feedback form, very sorry. Um, so you'll see a, a unique link to this feedback and scoring form. And what you will do is you will enter your name and the number of that application that you are assessing. Next slide. So once you've added the detail into the form, you'll be asked to score the questions. So the first, so the first question is what action has been taken? So this is asking what, what have they done? Next slide. So examples of action can be a range of different activities. So, so they can be any initiatives or solutions that the organization have, have run. They can be as or their own. So some have a mixture of say our solutions such as tea break, my name is safe space, and then it will be what, what they've done. So they may have implemented different policies or new strategic implementations. It can be events that they've run, collaborations with their networks or the creation of networks. It can be any type of data collection that they've done to inspire change and it can be any types of training and workshops and any other things that, that sort of may come up that you can see are working towards tackling race inequality. Next slide. So the next question is, how was this inclusive? So inclusive action was approved by, and how this action was approved by those with lived experience? This is a key, key question. And this asks how those with lived experience have approved the action that has been taken. And this is about what you think and whether you believe that there's evidence within the answer to support that this was the case. This answer is scored from, from between zero to five. Next slide. And what we mean by inclusivity is, was there involvement of the EDI networks? Did they consult their ethnic diverse staff? Were there surveys? Were there open conversations? around effective and key decisions and were ethnically diverse colleagues overall were they involved in these conversations and these decisions next slide so this question is about maximizing eth ethnically diverse employee engagement so how did the organization maximize engagement did they communicate and reflect a safe and encouraging and inclusive environment where ethnically diverse colleagues felt that they could become a part of and get involved in. Next slide. 
So this is about how the organization, how did they approach colleagues? What comms did they use? How did they use language? And how did they ensure that psychological safety was a priority? Next slide. This is a key question. So this is the this is the question about impact. So has meaningful impact been made? Again, this answer is scored from between zero minimal evidence up to five clear and substantial evidence. Next slide. And what we mean by impact is impact as a whole. So have they seen more participation in networks or initiatives? Have sentiments improved such as confidence, trust? Has there been a change to the culture? Is there progress and improvements that have been made that are supported by data, such as recruitment, retention, promotion? Have percentages of those sharing data increased or decreased yearly? Are colleagues taking more opportunities and getting actively involved? Are colleagues actively endorsing these changes? Next slide. Now, the next question is, how, how has this impacted ethnically diverse colleagues? This answer again is scored from zero minimal evidence up to five clear and substantial evidence. Next slide. And here is what we mean by impacting colleagues. Are they seeing higher satisfaction and safety within the work environment for ethnically diverse colleagues? Are they seeing higher recruitment, retention and promotion of ethnically diverse colleagues and more accessibility? Are more colleagues be taking, taking part and being visible within with the initiatives and are there more conversations taking place? Are they seeing changes in behavior and approach? Next slide. So this question is about new or different. So taking on this activity and working towards tackling race inequality can be new for some organizations and some of the activities that they take on before they start to become a trailblazer can be new. So this question is again scored from zero minimal evidence up to five clear and substantial evidence. Next slide. And this is what we mean by new or different. So, so what's new? So has there been a new strategy, a new approach, different types of communications with teams? Have they tried new initiatives or ways of working that they might not have otherwise considered? And have they taken on new solutions and initiatives? The next question is about bravery. So why was this brave? How have organizations gone outside their comfort zone and pushed against any resistance? So this question again is scored from zero to five. And what we mean by brave, next slide, is was, was, it was there a taking on of more responsibility and accountability? Was there real honesty about the improvements that needed to be made? Did they face resistance from the overall culture within the organization or even within leadership? Did they face repercussion, dissatisfaction with some of the changes they were making? Did they require retraining, which can take a lot of time or allocation of resources? Did it require real involvement and consideration in areas that had not been looked at? Or was there changes as a whole that needed to be looked at? So changes with approach, processes, and changing what was done before. What overall, it's about what did it take for their goals to be achieved? And how, and how did they overcome this? Next slide. So this is a really important question because this facilitates what they're going to do next. So Trailblazers is all about committing to consistent impact, not just a, a few actions that are going to get you one Trailblazer. We're hoping that organizations are going to continue and progress. So this is about their future plans. Next slide. And what we mean by future plans is how are they going to build and continue the momentum? Have they planned new organizational strategies, new collaborations, which could be with their internal networks or it could be with external bodies? Are they going to run further initiatives and events? Do they plan to publish data such as the ethnicity pay gap for accountability and for monitoring progress? Are they changing recruitment processes? Are they offering training and training opportunities and progression, progression options? or making changes to leadership or representation overall. Next slide. And now on to one of the final questions. So do you think this organization should receive trailblazer status? So this is this question is all about what you think, what your gut feeling is about the organization and the work that they have done. 
do you think in principle they deserve the status? So yes, not at all, not yet. Or you may like some further details. So you may want more information to be comfortable making a decision. And this is sort of what individuals choose when they think that an application is, is borderline and they want to know more. Next slide. Now, this isn't a job offer. So this is just about whether with the information that you have seen, whether you would like to work for this organization or whether you'd recommend others work for this organization. Because having a trailblazer can be an incentive for people to apply to work within organizations. So this is a really crucial question. And lastly, next slide. We would like you to share additional notes. So next slide. So this can be things that you think. So the strong areas of the applications, what you think about that, the weak areas of the application and key actions that the organization can take on to improve and build towards trailblazer status. This is crucial for the application as it helps organizations go forward and know what they need to do and learn new ways um, of new ways of thinking, new ways of doing things that they might not have otherwise considered. Okay, and as I mentioned earlier, you will get a mixture of, of applications. So some will be trailblazer medals, so the bronze, and some will be solutions, which will look like this. And some of the questions are, are quite similar. Next slide. So these are all our solutions. And as I mentioned, the questions are quite similar, but you, you will come across questions that are specific for that solution, which will be obvious when you're reading the application. Next slide. And lastly, evidence. So we have found the key to successful applications is evidence. So where possible, we have asked organization to provide evidence to support their answers. So usually there'll be an appendices. It will either be at the bottom of the application itself, or for some, we create separate folders, which will be obvious again. And I will direct you to them when I send you the links to the applications. Next slide. Okay, so as we mentioned, after completing the Trailblazer process, after we've run your scoring through the algorithm, organizations who've opted will receive a feedback report. So here is a successful feedback report, as you can see a lot of green and yellow there. Next slide. This is it would be a feedback report of an, of an application that has not yet met criteria. Next slide. And this will be for an application that is borderline. So there's a sort of a mixture of colors here. Okay. So here is a visual of the successful Trailblazer status. So just up close so you can see it. So when it's green and yellow, that, that's typically high scores. Next slide. Okay. And when criteria is not going to be met, so you'd see quite a lot of red, a lot of blue and, and black. That's what you'd see there. Next slide. And when it's borderline, again, as I mentioned, quite a mixture. Next slide. After successful trailblazers are announced, they will receive a range of assets, which include press releases, social media assets, in the, a certificate, the trailblazer logo and medal that they can use all over their own websites and social media. Next slide. So as we mentioned, we went through the process earlier. So as you can see here, the deadline for the light review has now passed. We're in the process of carrying out the light reviews and we will be going back to those organizations. We receive final submissions on 23rd of October. Once received, they will be anonymized and grouped to ensure that they're suitable to be judged. Between on the 2nd of October, the first group of applications will be received by judges. And on the 6th of November, the second group will be sent and you'll re you will receive between five to eight applications. And as we mentioned before, it should take up to around two hours of your time. Okay, and once received, you'll have about two, two hours. Now, just going on to the borderline applications. So as we mentioned, the organizations will receive their feedback. They will have two weeks to come back and then you will receive applications to score them again and they will be reassessed to be announced with the rest of the applications during Race Equality Week 2024. Next slide. Okay, so now that we've gone through the majority of the process, 
we thought now would be a good time to ask any questions. So feel free to put your questions in the chat and we will we will answer them. And what, what we'll add is, as I said, all these slides with the information will be provided in the packs for you. So when you go through, um, it, it, it'll feel a bit strange at first, but you'll get, you'll get used to it. When you're going through any of the questions, if you feel, I, I don't know how to answer what I'm meant to be doing, do get in touch with us. But can I just say, your thoughts, feelings, decision is right for you. If you think this is poor or this is okay, that's 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 correct. And as I said, more often than not, everyone else is feeling the same, et cetera, like that. After the whole thing, uh, once 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 it's all been completed, we'll give you um we'll we'll let you know, you know, you judge these organizations, these made it, these didn't make it, and you'll get to see what the other judges felt as well. And we will provide an, provide an opportunity for judges to get together to to to, to sort of share from, from each other, um, especially uh borderline ones. So I see some questions coming through. Um so um if I do this, let me just see. Um uh, wait, wait, wait. Right, okay. Uh, I think so, Rav, if they're, no, we've done that one, Angela, we've done that one. Okay, and Richard, apologies, internet connection problem. Uh, right, Audrey, can impact upon colleagues also include impact upon non-ethnically diverse colleagues, e.g. changing wider culture and behaviours? Yeah. I, if I, if, yeah, so if, I was just saying, if I can just answer, I think there's two things. When you go through it, it's really important. Are we making a difference to ethnically diverse colleagues? But actually, more often than not, you have to change how I'm going to use the word allies are acting or behaving and the culture. So, yeah, you kind of look at that. But our whole thing is because one organization, we got all our, I'm going to get all our allies to do this training, do this wonderful stuff and everything. That's nice. But did it make a difference? And that's what we're trying to, 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 to clarify. So, uh, and, and um, when you go through the questions and you see the options, you'll, clear, you'll be able to score it quite easily. Yeah. Um, and if you've got, as I said, if you've got a concern, you, you you just drop us a line. I don't know how to answer this sort of thing, um, but and, and that, that's why. And then actually, if there's not enough evidence, you can put in as a question. I'd like to know a bit more information. It's not clear. Um, so, so um, what can uh, so uh, Manish? Um, what level of confidence does REM have that the Trailblazers process has been effective at differentiating between those who are genuine Trailblazers and those who are good at gaming the system and writing good submissions? And what lessons can you share with us panelists to help us be clear on this? Um, Anna, do you want to answer that or, or would you like me to do that? Uh, yeah, sure. So any organization that opts to be a trailblazer, they they will be doing so recognizing that we're going to be coming back to them to see that they're, you know, what are you doing now? Even I speak to a lot of organizations and some organizations will say to me, they're not ready yet to go to the next level, but they are doing the work. So they do recognize that they, they will be under that scrutiny. And where possible, we do ask for evidence. So some organizations will be able to get hold of quite a lot and some won't be able to get hold of as much but we are asking more and more for more and more evidence where possible and for them to really share detailed answers so if you come across an answer that sort of has two lines you're not going to get a good idea of of what is actually happening in that organization and also if if anything sort of was to come up publicly about an organization we would speak to them directly and if they weren't if they were sort of going against sort of tackling race and equality um, they would lose their trailblazer status. I think it's a good question, and I, I, and I, I get it and I, I understand it. Um, I think two things. One is when you read an application, this is for your own personal decision. You, you know, you've all experienced the things that they're just writing a very good application, but I don't believe them, or that you know they, they've got a really good um, marketing writer. But as Anna said, it's all about the evidence and the data um, on that. So I, I and as I said, you know you'll judge it independently so if your gut is telling you i'm not so sure about this then that's the answer so you might say not enough evidence or minimal evidence and minimal doesn't get them doesn't get it it you know, overall they've got to be high in the good to um um you know exceptional um, uh, um thing fair would make you on borderline so you might think fair evidence so so and that's why we get we don't get you in a room because what do you might think this is they're just gaming a system etc and it influences others you do this in your own thing so actually if if if, if most of you think that this is a good application that that the algorithm will make that happen um so so it, 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 it it's on there but i think um but what you'll see is a lot of the applications do come from the race networks and i guess you've got to kind of like you know 
believe it a bit more. But again, even a race network, if, you know, we, we ask them, where's the evidence? Where's your data? How, you know, how can you, you've done all this training? Where's your proof that, that things have changed? So, um, you know, and, and, and that's up to them. But what we have found is most organizations, if they don't have any data to back it up, they often don't get trailblazer status because you as judges will say not enough evidence. You know, it's anecdotal. Those, the, the majority of those that do get trailblazer status, you know, one of the key elements is evidence of data. So, um, so, so, so that's good. Um, another question, I think, Rev. in terms of impact, one of the things we're asked to look for is confidence and trust. What type of evidence for this have previous judge, judges looked for? Um, this might be a little difficult to prove unless there are testimonials from racially, ethnically diverse employees. Um, Anna? So actually, we will ask for testimonial evidence. So that's something within the organizations that you will see. Um, so it would be directly from the ethnic diverse colleagues, how they're feeling. And confidence and trust aside from testimonials. So if, for instance, an organization has started to collect um, ethnicity data and say in 2022, only 63% of their ethnic diverse employees wanted to declare, and then it went up to 75 or 80%, it shows that there's more of a trust within the organization. The same with more participation in events so if you see that data where it's increasing more promotions more you know happier sentiments depending on the surveys that's improved confidence and trust within the organization and again it's a good question and, and Rav, what, what you what you might do is actually i'm not sure i haven't got enough evidence can they give us some more evidence and you can say i'd like to see this or i'd like to know that and then you know my gut feeling has said maybe everyone else is feeling the same. So we will go back to these organizations. You're not quite there yet. We want to see this. And then what you find is they'll say, oh, actually, we haven't got the evidence or we haven't got it. Or, oh, I didn't know you wanted that. Here it is. So we're giving them that choice and then and, 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 and that, that option. And then it comes back and it's rejudged. The whole thing is rejudged with some, that, you know, maybe two or three of you from the original round, but some fresh eyes as well. Because, again, you might have, you know, you can be sort of like biased because of how you scored and before sort of thing, et cetera. So, so it's quite, we try to do it quite, quite, quite. And what, one thing we do say, we do mix the judges up. So, you know, that's what we ask you for. And it's just for the judging process, you know, some of your um, um, experience and, and even your other characteristics. So we mix it up. So we've got people with different lived experience in life and, and sectors and roles. So, you know, you know, I'm going to make it, if you're a nurse from the NHS, uh, and you know you're you're a senior director from a construction company. Your your perspectives will be different, but the uh, the overall scoring is this is what people with lived experience think, um, and 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 it, you know that that that's what that's why we do it. So your your the group the pool of judges you'll be in will be quite different. Um, so there won't be um, you know um, you, you're many exactly with your same background or experience. Um, and again, your disability and age age wise as well, because we want to see you know, if there's an 18 year old judge and a 63 year old judge we both is really valid and we want from different perspectives as well okay thank you for that um got thumbs up manish thank you um any 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 other questions i, I think we've got two um two minutes if, if anyone's as i said yeah this, this is not the end of it I hope, as a we, we, we'll set we'll, we'll we'll share the video with you of more what anna went through uh and then also the slides so you've got uh, um um in, in your packs going forward but there'll be you know really regular and good contact from contact from anna um, on that, but, um, I, I would say generally only one judge has, or two judges has not been able to deliver in the past. Uh, one had COVID, so this is, this is all good. and the other one had sort of fine, um, fine, sort of fam family issues. That's why we're giving you two weeks. What, what you just need to let us know if you've got a concern, do let us know because we'll take that burden off you and find another judge. Yeah. So we we, re we rely on your we do rely on you to judge it. But if you if, you know life work things take over um just let us know you know um, we'd rather know in advance than putting you under pressure oh you know you say i'll do it this weekend i'll do it and then you know you, you don't we, we don't want you to be stressed and they'll you know we have another round in the in the spring can i just manage this i'm not asking you to drop out now <laughs> not, not at all it, um, it's just don't put yourself un, un, under pressure and as i said like some people can do it in two hours some people do, but if you see if you see the judges they find it quite inspiring seeing what others are doing um, and I think they said, you know, you know, some novel things, which, which, which is great. So as a curious person, you know, it might be of real interest. So th thank you for that. I think um, that's good. Um, brilliant. OK, um, back to you, Anna. OK, 
So hopefully you can see how valuable your participation is. So next slide. So as you mentioned, your participation is absolutely invaluable to the process. It's really important um, and that you, that you go with your gut instincts and share what you really feel. Um, so unless you prefer not to, we will pr be promoting you as judges. And to help us do this, I have requested that you send in a headshot. You should all start to receive um, your content and your images by Friday. Um, next slide. And we will just have a short video from a previous judging panelist, Leon, um, about why they in, they were happy they were involved. So I think for me as a person, I, I've wanted to be someone who advocates for change, um, someone who um, you know, is actually trying to do something to make make you know, the world more diverse improve equality and I think with the initiative of, of the trailblazer that kind of gave me that opportunity to actually be impactful um, and then on the judging element um, it allows me to obviously give my opinion you know congratulate people for the good work they're doing but also say look these are elements that I think you could you could do to you know improve going forward. Can I just sort of interrupt? So, so Manish, um, Manish has asked a question really importantly. Um, can we learn from each other's judges? So there will be an opportunity um, where judges will get together and where we'll go through, especially that those that where we is it, people have different perspectives. So some scored uh, one question of one and some have scored it five. It'd be good to know what why that. So there will be opportunities to, to mix and that'll be um, most probably in the new year. Um, um, so yeah, you can learn from each other's experience and perspective. Um, but your, you know, your own opinion is correct. But sometimes you might think, oh, actually, I, I hadn't seen it from that point of view. Um, and can I just say the next couple of slides? Can you just do like in, in what we call in ten seconds? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay, next slide. So here is a list of all of the trailblazers that we've had so far. You can see the silver right there. Next slide. And importantly, we have a few events coming up. We have one tomorrow, um, which is the Race Network Leads and Future Leads event, which will tell you what leaders are doing to tackle race inequality. And then we will have the Get Ready for Race Equality Week 2024, where we'll be um, announcing the theme. Next slide. Okay, um, if you haven't already and you would like to, we do have the REM Jobs Board that we spoke about earlier um, in, the, in the slides. Next slide. And if you do need any type of assistance, I will be in constant contact with you, but you can email me at anna at racequalitymasters.com or the info at box, um, and we will be sure to get back to you. Next slide. So just to wrap up, a huge thank you to all of our partners and sponsors. As mentioned, we are a not-for-profit. So if you would like to help fund or explore sponsorship or marketing opportunities, please do get in touch. Next slide. Next slide. And overall, a big thank you all for attending today. And just to remember that Trailblazers is more than more than an award and you are helping to create the change that we all want to see and indeed feel. Yep. Hope you all have a great day. Thank you all. We've done incredible. We've got it back on time as well. I'm not, I'm not always very good at that. So well done. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks for everyone's kind words. Um, and yeah, thank you for volunteering, opportunity, um, offering to be a judge. You know, we can't do this without you.